What's up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today I'm going to give you some quick tips on how you can really easily apply graffiti decals to any sort of geometry or scenes that you're working on in C4D. Um, this method in particular relies on it being already UV'd, so if you haven't UV'd your object yet, go back to some of my older episodes and take a look at how you can do that. But we're going to be using these mega scans walls for the sake of today's episode, just so I can really quickly show you some Photoshop techniques on how you can overlay either your own tags or some other people's over some pretty boring geometry just to give it a little more um, interest inside your scene just like this so without further ado we're gonna re-import this real quick and rearrange it just so we're working from scratch um, the one i downloaded was this one i'll show you guys on mega scans um, just the last time we're just gonna make sure we're hitting export um, obviously making sure that we're set to octane renderer in the render engine here and this should export in no time at all Amazing. So once that's in, what we can do is we'll go about separating this because it's always intersecting. Uh, if we just hop into this view here, we can move apart our walls just to make them connect nicely, but not too imperfectly. We can move our second wall just over here. Just moving it like that. And we can get our final asset and just double make sure we can leave that one there because that's usually the wall that looks the best and we can move these last one this last one just here and we see we've got our wall um we can see this a little dark at the minute and that's because we haven't set this to aces or something important is to head into the node editor here sort through all the textures that you got find the albedo and make sure that is set to aces cg here and you'll see it'll brighten right up to what we need obviously making sure our hdri is set in aces as well always important um, and we can go by configuring the light into what we want. For me, I was going for like a more natural look, so we can leave it something somewhere like this. And we can start going about, obviously there's a little gap there, we can really quickly tweak that. We can start going about graphing up this wall um, a little bit. So, if we just head back in here, you see that little gap there, we can just go about tweaking that so it fits perfectly, just like that. So this is fairly easy, this method. All it requires you to do is literally head into your object, find your albedo, because the albedo is one which shows the paint really being painted on the object. We can hit locate here to find exactly where this file is. Just right click on that and hit open with, and then go on Photoshop. And then once that loads up, we can see it looks a little confusing, but um, if you're a little observant, it should be pretty easy to find out exactly where these actual parts are. <clears throat> So if we just head back to the scene real quick, we can kind of plan out where we want to add some tags. So for me, the focal point was obviously this um, this set of doors here. So we'll have one there, potentially some up here where there's a little bit of space. Um, here, the walls start intersecting and the UVs become a little blur. So as good as space that will be, it may be better to chuck some up here or over here on this side. Um, and all you need to do is sort of like look for the windows and then navigate around that in Photoshop really. So as a start, um, I believe I have the tag from earlier saved in here, which is one of my own. But if I just hop in here, I can drag that in. And this is a photo taken, actually. So this isn't a tag on white. And the way you can sort of extract the um, tag off this is literally by right-clicking, hitting rasterize layer, heading into image adjustments, um, and setting it to threshold, which some of you guys might be familiar with. And now this is basically separating the image into black and white. So if we drag this down or up a little bit, you can see that it's separating. The more we separate, the more we start bringing through the strokes, but you'll notice once we bring those strokes in and import it into ACES, it'll actually become a little less visible when it's combined with the normal maps and whatnot. So you might want to hover it just above about here, and that should give us a pretty nice effect. Um, from that point, we can just really quickly go about selecting all the black and just making sure we're getting rid of that. Um, might be a little bit of residue in some places and then here we are left with the original brainwash um, for blending purposes we could literally set this to add and move it around but you'll see it looks far too bright in the image it doesn't even look like the paint's been put on so what is a better idea is for you to do this if you had to select or rather if you had to oh no it's select yet yeah, color range and just click on the black here and hit ok it's going to select all of the black in the image or the layer so if you hit delete on your keyboard, you'll see we've got just the white left. 
Now this is more practical. If you want to size this down, and obviously this is the wall here that we're aiming to graph over, we can size it down like this, maybe rotate it a little bit so we've got some nice proportions. And then instead of setting it to add, this is on normal at the minute, we can set it to something like overlay, where you can see we're getting the ridges from the actual building on the image, on the um, paint rather, which is sick. But it looks a little bit too dark right now. So what I would be inclined to do is potentially hit this, set this to normal, and maybe have a quick flick through the blending modes so we can see exactly what we're what we're getting here. A lot of these aren't really gonna brighten it out too much. If you keep it on overlay, it's obviously a similar effect, and then you can adjust the opacity down to sort of like out what you like I think 30 maybe maybe 40 percent is a little nice you're still getting the nice ridges and importantly through the door here you're getting that so this may well be quite a decent effect so for one that's a tag which is pretty well placed there um, if you want to add a little more interest what we can do is add a few more so I think I've got a Pinterest tab open here and you can literally have a flick through here for any ideas if you're good at writing graph you can head on your iPad or even in real life just go out and start writing stuff on paper um, take a photo of it and do the threshold technique that always works. Um, obviously black and white is preferred. But for now we're just going to hop here and just grab some bits which look cool um, that we can use. So if we just hit copy image, the second tour, we can size this up and do exactly the same technique. We can hit adjustments, uh, threshold, just like this. Maybe something like that. Hit OK. Select, color range, click on the black. OK. Delete. And then we can go about sizing this. So we need to take a look here. Some of these uh, UVs are a little distorted. But um, if, say, we're targeting an area like this up here, we can look for that little blue square and the window, right? So if we look, I think it may just be underneath here. You can see the remnants of a window there in that blue square, which means that that bit there is most likely just here. And if we were to tag that up right there, you can sort of see the frame of where the would be and sort of adjust that as you will. Maybe better to set this to overlay like before, duplicate it one more time, maybe turn it down ever so slightly. And something that's important, I'd say, to add a little touch is you can go about adding a tiny bit of noise, it's going to make it look a little more spray painted. So if we do that, we can. Turn that up there, apply the same thing to this layer. I would at this point consider merging the layers, but because the layers are individually sort of um, overlaying on the texture, it's sort of more helpful to deal with them individually. We can then, or rather, just got lost in the viewport. We can head to our brainwash and then hop in here, do the same noise process, just head down to noise. Just mount a little bit and then a tiny little more on the overlay layer. See, we're getting some, some pretty nice look. Subtle, but it's what makes it look real in the end. And then lastly, if we just grab one more that looks a little outlandish, a little different, we can search graffiti tags and find something like, quite like the red on this. I think the red on this looks pretty hard. Um, or maybe even something like this, we can give this a challenge. So if we paste that in real quick, we've got some nice spray painted classic graph here. We can try to do the same technique. So we can head into adjustments, threshold of that. So we're getting a load of spray there. We can hit OK. And uh, we've got a little bit down here, but we don't have the whole tag right, so there's no real point keeping that. We can just sort of like zone around that. Hit delete. And sort of go around here, hit delete. And we've got no no other remnants in the black area. So what we can do is just like before, hit color range, double click on that. And ideally, we should be left with a really clean result. And we can look at this and think, all right, something like maybe around here. Hold on, maybe Discord. We can do something around here, maybe by the door. Uh, maybe in that little space there, or rather we can even put it on the same door just below. Um, if you just take a gander and Photoshop real quick, we can play about with the way you want this. Personally, I quite like the idea of chucking it down here and might actually make this one red. You can even overlay it if you like, but if you wanted to make this red, 
best way of doing that is creating a new layer over the top really quickly, drawing a quick box over it, right click fill, color, uh, picking a nice juicy red like that. And then what you can do is right click on it, click create clip mask, it's gonna overlay that red straight onto it. You can probably merge it at this point and then you can overlay just like before and duplicate it one more time. Um, in fact, for this one, I'd say the overlay looks pretty good the way it is. And then you can go about adding, oh, you can see for the perfectionists out there, it's a little bit of a black line there, which is remnant from the color range. And then we can add some noise to that, just like, maybe it's a bit more colorful, just like this. And you'll start to get a real spray painty look off that red. And then just like that, in fact, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it separate for the sake of this. You can see we're getting some pretty, pretty decent looks. I'm tempted to do one more just for the sake of really filling it up. We can get something like this, which looks sick. Copy that, paste that in real quick. Hello, this is already on black, so if we're lucky, we may well be able to just cut color range. Although, unlikely because of the resolution. So if we just go back on this and just threshold it, say continuation, we can work with something like this. So the issue is that because of that spray, we sort of like disintegrates through the piece, the threshold doesn't quite pick that up the way that we'd want to. So it may be a case of literally just making it look a similar way once we've arranged it out. Get rid of the black like that and think, yeah, probably go for that spot there, which is by the window, which would be probably just here, if I'm correct. And we can drop that in just here and make that a bright green because the bright green will stand out nicely in the shot. Make a new layer on top really quickly draw a big box over it, hit fill, color, and then pick back that lime green, just like this. We can right click, create clip and mask, merge those two together, head into overlay here. You see we're getting a pretty decent look there. And I'd say, God, maybe, maybe one more, but it's gonna make it super neon. Maybe if we desaturated that top one a little bit, it would give more of a painty look, I'm thinking. So we could do, yeah by doing that and then adding a little noise to both of those and before you know it getting a pretty good graphy look and we can just turn that down a little bit and at this point we've got the UVs so we've got the graph and our UVs we can hit export quick export is PNG and rename this graph to export that in and then hop back in our scene we've already loaded up um, mega scans geometry, geometry. Ooh. head in here, go into node editor, find our albedo, and literally up in here, it's going to take us to the same folder. And our graph should be just here. If we hit open in there, make sure we're hitting yes, and our graph gets loaded in right like that. And then from this point, we can use this in our scene however we want. You can see what I mean about the threshold in with a little bit of the red there. Um, but in general, you're getting a pretty nice look. Um, the way that the reason it looks this way is because the normal sort of cuts through the, um, the graffiti a little bit. You can see the way the normals are set up on this uh, on this gate, or the, maybe maybe it'll be the normals or the bump. So if you wanted to experiment with that, we'll quickly zone in on the green one because it was most apparent on that. But if we quickly hop over can really see that brick is coming right through. So if we head into our node editor real quick, um, take a look, it may be the displacement in all honesty, actually, I don't think the displacement is activated. Um, really quickly, if we just take a look at what we're working with here, we can start disconnecting a few of these and see which one's the culprit. So the normal doesn't actually have too much of an effect, which leads me to thinking maybe the bump, the bump is what's doing it. So if we just head the bump and move that back in, and instead turn this down a little bit, maybe the power down to 0.1. And so we'll start 
I say at this point it's probably not too much. I thought I'd say that's good. It's just when you, when it's fully powered, sometimes it can be a little overwhelming. And we're still getting the, the bump from the bricks and the normal and whatnot. In fact, it looks a little less sharp and more realistic. So bear that in mind if you are playing with Mega Scans assets. Sometimes, even though they're you know imported with the right materials, they're not built for Octane and C4D, so do bear that in mind. Um, but in general, that's a pretty good pretty good skim over how you can go about editing some textures and adding your own adding your own little twist to them which I think is pretty sick um, obviously play with your lighting like you normally can add lights here and there uh, Mike can posit this into a scene later I'll show you guys how to really put these assets to good use but for now um, that's the tip that I wanted to share with you today so I appreciate all of you guys watching at the moment um, it's really enjoyable it's really sick me doing this and being able to share what I know with you guys um, if you have any suggestions leave them down below thank you for watching and um, I will see you in the next episode.